Well, Kevin, um, great to be on here with you, everybody. My name is Michael Florio, and I'm on with uh, my colleague, Kevin Fisher, and we're just delighted to be here at the inaugural broadcast for LTC Coffee Break with One America. Kevin and I are both regional sales directors with One America, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself, and Kevin can do the same for him. But uh, just wanted to say, we have a very simplistic uh, goal or mission for this uh, broadcast, and that's simply to share and exchange some ideas with all of you with the goal of educating, um, informing, and just inspiring. It's not an easy time. I don't know about you guys, but I've been through SARS, I've been through MERS, I've never been through a pandemic before, and uh, these are uncharted territories. And for those of us specifically in the financial services industry, a face-to-face, traveling, handshaking, meeting across the table, lunching, dinnering, this is a new environment. So how do we stay relevant? How do we stay connected, which is important from a business standpoint, from a personal, from an emotional standpoint? How do we connect with other people? Um, Maybe with family members we're involved with. Maybe how do we stay disconnected from those people when we're connected a little bit too much? I don't know. All these things we can talk about. One thing that uh, uh, both Michael and I want to share with you is, you know, please reach out to us if you have any ideas, questions, comments, whatever it is. We're here for you. We at One America are here for the long haul. Uh, we believe in what we're doing. Today, we're going to get a uh, get a feel for that uh, by speaking with one of our colleagues from California, Bridget Collins, and you know, hopefully, she can share with us the experience that she's going through uh, relative to this this whole pandemic thing. And uh, with that, I think I think I'll spin it back to you, Mike, and uh, see whatever you have to uh, to add into the thing. Well, Kevin, we've talked about some great questions here in terms of the pandemic, how it affects us and, and what's going on and what we've heard in the industry. But you know, take it to the next step. You and I are in a situation where, you know, certainly things are closed, restaurants are takeout only, gyms are closed, et cetera. But we're not as restricted as some other people are. There are hot spots throughout the country, be it Washington State, you know, just north of New York City, the New Rochelle area, um, you know, com- complete shelter in place, but also California. And that's why I wanted to talk to someone I think can give us a little more perspective on what is this whole shelter in place? How is that different from what we're experiencing and, and how is she doing that? So, um, you know, Kev, I wanted to bring Bridget on. And for those of you on the call, Bridget Collins has been just someone that we have enjoyed working with uh, tremendously. She's a regional sales director, as Kevin and I are at One America, financial services industry for, gosh, uh, 22 years. And just about all of that's been geared towards long-term care. Uh, she's worked in distribution, sales, planning. She's been on the sales desk, putting together the illustrations, answering the detailed questions, um, and a lot of time as a regional wholesaler and being on the outside external, which she is now, well, not at this very moment because of this pandemic, but normally, uh, resides in the San Francisco Bay Area with her husband, two children, ages 15 and 12, and their two-year-old yellow lab uh, named Milo. So, Bridget, uh, let me just start off by asking you the high-level generic question, and that is, uh, you know, with all this extra family time, how has that been? Has it been family nirvana for you? Has it been really a coronavirus uh, getting type situation? So tell us about that. Well, sure. No, and thanks, Michael and Kevin, for having me on. Um, You know, I would say it's probably somewhere in between the two. (laughs) Thank goodness my family unit, for the most part, we get along with each other, um, but certainly all four of us. And, you know, in a 1,700 square foot house um, for now almost a week um, (laughs) has been challenging, (laughs) to say the least. But uh, we're doing our best to muddle through it. Um, You know, my husband and I are really trying to make sure that the kids, you know, are, you know, as as, adapting to the situation as as best they can. We have no idea how long this is going to last for. That's kind of the, the big unknown and it's just trying to, you know, one day at a time and making sure everybody just kind of keeps the peace, um, which we've been doing fairly successfully. But, um, you know, we're strategically in all different parts of the house. <laughs> I gave yeah. up my uh, my work office for the kids um, so that they could spend basically all morning in there because they're going to school virtually that way. And it allows them the space that they need and the privacy to um, log on to their school stuff and do what they need to do. So I've moved to our our bedroom and set up a makeshift little office in our bedroom. And, and the dog is 
kind of with me because we're trying to keep daddy busy downstairs doing different projects just so that we all feel like we have some semblance of normalcy um with the schedule so you know that's how we're doing so far <laughs> so, so what is um well, what does it mean specifically uh you know when they tell you to shelter yeah i mean they've designated essential services it was actually you know there's a lot more than what i would have thought would be essential but i guess if you you know want to have a conversation about each one of the things and it kind of makes sense so banks are banks are still open i think um i don't know if the tellers are still open but certainly the atm machines you know the lobbies those those from my understanding are open post offices have remained open um grocery stores uh, restaurants um, to the degree that you can order takeout or have food delivered there's no dine-in at all I think they're trying to keep a semblance of, of some normalcy. Um, but um, to be quite honest with you, I it's Friday and I haven't left my house um, since Sunday except for to go on a walk. So I haven't wow. gone out at all. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping that we're being overly cautious. I'll take overly cautious any day of the week um, to get through this thing faster than to kind of not take it seriously and kind of go about my everyday life. So I've, you know, the only one that's gone out has been my husband. I've gone out for a walk in the neighborhood. That's about the extent of what I've done. My kids have not left the house um, <clears throat> since Friday of last week. Wow. Um, but yeah, I think the essential businesses, grocery stores, I'm actually, I'm planning to go to the grocery store just because I'm getting a little antsy. Um, but we're not, my husband and I are not going out together. We're going separately and, you know, doing all of the protocols when we get home, washing hands and all that kind of stuff before we do anything inside the house. So Bridget, you know, considering what you've done in the past, um, and maybe you could tell us a little about what a normal week might look like pre-pandemic, but how are you functioning today? What can you tell us being in that shelter in place situation? How are you functioning? Because people don't really know what a regional sales director does and how much you're in the office, yes, you have a home office when you're not traveling, but you're on the road a lot. So how did you adjust and how are you doing today? Yeah, I mean, a normal schedule for me would be, you know, usually I am traveling, you know, two to three days a week, almost every week. Mm -hmm. And that's usually by, by plane. I'm usually traveling, you know, within my territory of the accounts that I support. <clears throat> I, I diligently do try to be home on Mondays and Fridays just because my kids have a lot of extracurricular activities and when it's in my control, um, I try to travel Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday when, you know, but a lot of times, you know, we have meetings that are outside of our territory jurisdiction, if you will, cross country, things like that, that are pre-planned that we need to be at that could take us away for, you know, four or five days at a time. Um, you know, the irony is for the month of March, I was actually going to be gone every week for three plus days every week for the entire month. And that whole thing just got completely canceled every single trip, every, everything. So, um, you know, I have to admit that the first week of the cancellations, I was a little paralyzed because I was like, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be gone. And, you know, to try to figure out how to pivot, uh, it was a challenge, but I'm, you know, I'm working through that and, um, you know, reaching out to my accounts virtually. So everything has become virtual office. I, you know, I, I'm literally not leaving my house. So I'm, you know, making more phone calls probably than I ever used to. I'm definitely doing more virtual meetings. And I am utilizing, you know, sort of the functionality of cameras and FaceTime on my phone and things like that. Because, um, you know, when you're going to see people face to face, every week or every other week you can jump on a phone just like you normally would and just talk to them but when we're not seeing each other and even just me on a personal level you know even seeing somebody through a screen um is a is a new is new but it's something that i think i've, I've got to do just so that we can keep the humanity here you know we're, we're still real people yeah. on the end of these lines or on the other side of these computers so um yeah, yeah. it's been a it's been a huge adjustment I'm not gonna lie do you think that what you're doing now is sustainable. I mean, we really don't know the extent of this. We don't know when this curve is going to flatten out. We don't know how long this will be. I mean, you know, this is a whole new way of doing things. Like you said, we have no idea how long this is going to go for us. We can't really plan for the sustainability of it. It's going to have to be sustainable. So I'm going to have to figure out, you know, new ways to, to still engage. And, you know, I uh, and still, you know, the, the kind of show must go on, you know, 
it, the business has to be conducted. Um, so there's, you know, it's just kind of thinking outside of the box. I mean, I've had some colleagues who've come up with some fantastic ideas. We're doing a great job of mm -hmm. sharing with each other, you know, some of the different things that we're trying to do. Um, I think first and foremost is staying, you know, as we need to stay in front of our accounts, I need to stay in front of my accounts and my advisors and my producers. The advisors and producers out there need to stay in front of their clients. And I think the first thing is, is making sure we're keeping this human. You know, I'm, I mean, my tagline for this year was real people, real stories. Well, we are certainly all going to have them this year, aren't we? So, um, yeah. no better, t no better time than to, you know, reach out and, and first just ask somebody how they're doing. Right. I mean, I, I think that's important. And uh, there are a lot of different ways to do that. Some wholesalers were talking about, you know, utilizing some of the, the food delivery services, DoorDash, Grubhub, um, Uber Eats, and, you know, putting a credit on, you know, an account or a producer advisor's uh, account that they can buy themselves a, a meal to know that we're still thinking about them and those lunch and learns that maybe we had planned, but we can't do them in person. We're still going to attempt to do it in a new and creative way. Um, you know, things like that, you know, things like, you know, phone calls, like I said, just reaching out, making sure that everybody's doing okay. I'm, I'm instituting, a, you know, a 30 minute Thursdays. I like the little gimmicks, you know, the little taglines here to, and I'm turning my camera on 30 minute Thursday webinars, or I'm turning the camera on and I'm keeping it fluid. I'm having a conversation virtually with my producers that I normally would have face to face. And then diving into, you know, what it is that we do. And, and we do provide a valuable, we are in a valuable business. We provide a valuable service to the end consumer that ends up putting a long-term care plan in place. So I think we can continue with those conversations. It's just doing it differently. What, what's been your um, biggest obstacle that you've had to? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think for the most part it's been, it hasn't been terribly difficult, but you know, I'm, I'm somebody who's never taken myself too seriously. So when I'm doing my webinars and I'm doing my phone calls, I'm, hey, guys, I'm, I'm shelter in place and we got a full family functioning, you know, under the same roof right now. And um, I think being open, uh, yeah, I mean, being open and being honest and being transparent to my accounts and my advisors and my producers about me as a person uh, and the situation that I'm in, there's a lot of tolerance and patience out there. But I think if you're not somebody who's comfortable kind of opening that door to your personal life because you keep your business and personal separate. I think that might be a line that you've, you've got to blur a little bit now. I think people are willing to receive it, but we just can't function in a, in a business environment like we used to before. And people have to be flexible. But I think if you're willing to, to share a little bit about your circumstance, that people are, are more willing to, um, you know, take yeah. that into consideration. Yeah, I think that's great. It's a great question. And in some respects, you know, something good like building better relationships and being more open with people we interact with normally on a very formal and superficial level. Uh, there are good things that can come out of this too. Hey, these situations will always create opportunity. So some of that has yet to, you know, become evident, but I think it's out there. So, quest, Last question that I have is, you know, if you had one or two nuggets uh, to take away you know, what to avoid, what to do, how to do something better. Don't be afraid to try something new. So, I mean, in, in this environment, I don't think that you can, you can really make a mistake. Um, and, and I, you know, and I would say, you know, like I mentioned, you know, when I was first faced with, I'm not supposed to be home and I was a little paralyzed is don't, don't wallow in that. Don't, don't yeah. dwell in that. And another little thing, you know, I mean, I'm a news watcher. I had the best day yesterday because I turned it off. I just turned it off. You know, I listened to my, you know, 30 minutes in the morning that I usually do, um, you know, when I can. And then, and then I shut it off and I just got to back to the business of doing what I needed to do um, during the day. I think scheduling um, yourself, you don't have to schedule nine to five. Schedule yourself. You're, you're going to do this and, and, and create a task list for yourself um, and and check those off and then create a new task list. You don't have to have tasks going out for a month or a week. You know, I think if you give it for a day, that's that's a great accomplishment. So those are the little things that I would say to do so that you're not paralyzed and that you can keep moving forward. And whether, hey, I'm going to I'm going to reach out to five people today. I'm going to send, you know, four emails out or I'm going to, you know, whatever it is to keep your to keep yourself sane, keep your business functioning and in a business environment, you know, just so that your accounts, producers, advisors, whoever you're working with, know that you're still there to help them. But that's, yeah. that's what I would say to do. I think if you don't do that, you could stay in paralysis 
mm-hmm. and then that just gets anxiety and then that's a whole multitude of negative things and right now we, I don't think any of us professionally or personally can afford to be in a negative headspace so whatever you can do to stay positive and keep putting one foot in front of the other um, that's what I would say you got to do thank you Bridget. I think that's great advice and I think this is the time more than ever to reach out and connect and just let people know hey we're all open for business. Bridget Collins from the greater San Francisco area, can't thank you enough for your time. Uh, I hope that uh, you guys really enjoy having some time together. I'm sure the kids on whatever level appreciate having you around because uh, I know how much you're gone and how much you're on the road, but thank you for your time. Wow, that was some good stuff. Bridget, really, um, thank you very much for your time. And, uh, and I know that you've got to run, so I'll let you go on and, um, you know, and I really want to respect everyone's time on the call. So our contact info is there. Kevin did a great job. Thank you, Kevin, for putting this together. But what's working for you? We would like to know. Feel free to shoot us a message, you know, either one, and uh, and we'll certainly look at all of that. And We're just excited about the next time we get to talk to you because, you know, we talked about some of the generic things that work, but specifically what can you put out? what material, what information, and next time that we get in front of you, we'd like to bring on Roz Montgomery, who's our marketing guru extraordinaire at One America, and she can talk about social media, how to set that up at your agency, or how to set it up for your individual practice, what are some materials, be it electronic, hard copy that you can send out, invitations for meetings, et cetera, and really take advantage of that. As I said, now's the time to communicate. So. Uh, Thanks for dialing in. Uh, Remember uh, that our mission is just really to educate, inform, and inspire and and make things a little bit better for all of us as we stay connected. Kevin, anything that I missed that you want to close on? We're going to be doing this every week until, uh, well, let's just put a hard date out there until July 1st, and uh, we'll figure out what's going on then. Uh, Thanks for taking your time. Uh, Hopefully, we provided with you some provided some value for uh, for you and something you can act upon and uh, be safe. My coffee's empty. I think it's time to go, Kevin.